I'm going to do a brief little demonstration here on how to use a graphing calculator to find one variable statistics on a list of data that I compiled. So what we'll do is I'll show you how to input the data and then the buttons to push to find the mean, the variance, standard deviation, and we'll just see what else we can get. So the first thing, I guess I should have written down the list of data. So these are the winning scores from the last 10 Super Bowls. So the team that won, this is how many points they had. And this is only valid if you're watching this before the 2014 Super Bowl. So this is the 2013 game. 29, 21, 24, and 32. So there's my list of 10 numbers. Quick check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. So to get those numbers written down, Okay, because I'm going to slide my paper over so I can zoom in on the calculator. Okay, so here's the calculator. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. The numbers aren't going to be that important, right? They're going to go off screen because they're down here. Um, but I want you to be able to kind of see some of the buttons here and on the screen. So let me zoom in just a little bit more. So on this Texas Instrument Calculator, the main button I'm going to use is this Stat button. So if you have a different brand of calculator or a different version of Texas Instrument Calculator, you're probably going to have someplace on there a stat button. So try to find that. And let's go ahead and turn our calculator on. And I'll clear that out. And I'm going to go to my stat menu to start. Fabulous. OK, so here are the three things that I'm going to, well, I'm only going to talk about two of them today. One is editing, and then the next thing is calc. So edit is where we input our data. So I'm going to edit my lists. So it looks like this calculator was used for something before. So the very first thing I need to do is clear out all of that data. And I don't need to clear out each column. I just need one. And for convenience, I want to make it L1. OK, did you guys see what I did? I'm sorry I did that fast. I used these arrow buttons to get up on the top line. Notice I'm highlighted above L1. Down here, you can see they have all of those data values in L1 listed. So while I'm up here, I'm going to hit the Clear button. Notice they're gone. And then I'm going to hit Enter. Ah, I have a nice clean column to put all of those data values in. So I'm going to ignore my L2 and L3. If those bother you, if you have something there, it's like, I can't handle it if I still see numbers. Go ahead and clear them out, just like we did with L1. Pause and then come back. Okay, for now, I'm going to start inputting that list of 10 numbers. And it's just, right, punch in the numbers and hit enter, and it'll bring you down to the next one. You'll also notice down here at the bottom, it'll tell you list one, the first data value. So we can kind of keep track and make sure we didn't lose something. So 34, 21, 31, 31, 27, 17, 29, 21, 24, 32. L10, right, I had 10 values, perfect. OK, so now I have my data all input. So remember, that was stat, edit. So now I need to go back into my stat menu. And this time, what I want to do is I want to calculate. So I'm, I used my arrow to come over to calculate. So here's a list of all of the different things that the Texas Instrument Calculator, at least, will calculate for you. And the one that we're going to do is this one variable statistics. So some of the rest of these, in fact, all of them that I can see here, because I don't know what need meet is, whatever. But everybody else um, deals with two variables, if you're trying to relate two different variables. This one, I just want to talk about, well, what's the average score for the winning team in a Super Bowl? And how much do those vary? So that's those are one variable statistics. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. So one variable statistics pops up. Now, if your information is not in L1, or if you put it someplace else or named your list something else, right after you have this one variable stats, you need to type in, using your alpha keys down here, what the name of that is. Okay. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and type in my list name. And it was L1. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just 
push my calculator up and I know it's totally blurry and there's nothing I can do about it, but especially if you have the same calculator, right here in blue above my one key, it says L1. So that corresponds right to that list in my stats menu. So I'm going to type in second L1 and let's see the miracle that happens. So I have to know some notation. So the first thing I see here is X bar, right? That's for mean. So that's the average. So the average of my data, I'm going to go ahead and grab my piece of paper and write those numbers in. The mean was 26.7. That's the average score of the winning team in a Super Bowl. So this is the summation of all of the X's. I don't actually need those. Uh, if you know your um, standard deviation and variance formulas by using the summation forms, right, you might copy those down. I don't really care. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that. I'm going to let my calculator do a lot of that work for me. So the next two I'm going to look at is this S sub X and this, so that little squiggle fish symbol is sigma. So S sub X is the standard deviation for a sample, right? So we use uh, English letters if it's a sample, Greek letters if it's the population. So this time I just took 10, right? 10 of the Super Bowl games out of all of them. So that would be a sample, not a very random sample, but it's a sample. And so the standard deviation for my sample would be well, let's say 5.68 if we round it. And the variance, I don't, that might come down here. Um, let's see, n is 10, so that just tells you how many data values you had. Oh, it doesn't tell us our variance. So if I wanted the variance, remember that is standard deviation squared, so you could just take that 5.68 and square it. I'm just writing that down in case I need it in a bit. Let's see, the minimum, the lowest X value we had was 17. The first quartile is 21. Remember, so quartiles, you take your data points, your 10 values, divide it up into fourths, and 21 corresponds to the value at the one-fourth mark. 25% right? of the values are less than 21. Median, right? half the values are 28 or less third quartile, 31, and then our max x value is 34. Amazing. So once again, that was stat calc, one variable statistics. And then you get for free all of this information.